Yes, that's my man DJ Limelight right there. Five o'clock shutdown mix. Keisha Nicole, I'm just here to facilitate the turn up. By the way, I'm hanging out right now at Community Spirits, 6002 East 38th Street. That's off 38th in Arlington. So if you're just getting off of work right now, you definitely need to be pulling up because I got my man 50 Cent in the building. How you doing? I'm good, man. Happy to be here. I mean, they happy to see you out there. Yeah, I'm excited. Like, you get a chance. It's, for me, it's opportunity to reconnect with my fans too it hasn't it been like 13 years since you dropped your last album it's been a long time feels like a long time like well, 2003, right? well 2003 that was the first album yeah the first album that's yeah, what I'm saying, yeah. and it's since then i mean it's one of the the, the what's the the largest debuting hip-hop mm-hmm. album so it's, it's uh one of those projects you can't shake mm-hmm. like you know i made a lot of stuff after people really appreciated that record and it's like it's hands down, some you don't get a second chance at a first impression. Mm-hmm. So that impression was so strong that it kind of created to them who 50 Cent is. You know? And then you created the brands like <laughs> crazy. You got so much going on with power and then F and Vodka. Of course, that's what we're here for today. If you come out here and you get a bottle of F and Vodka, you get an autograph on the bottle with 50 Cent. Okay, now he's gonna be here until seven o'clock. You, I, I'll be following you on Instagram. 50, you a savage on there. <laughs> well, you know, I, I try to adapt to the environment. You know, uh-huh. people, they say the craziest things in the world on, on social networking. You know what I mean? Like, you say the craziest things on social network. Them. I'm trying to keep up with the audience. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've seen recently everybody was going crazy because you had posted a picture saying you had a, a third son. But this is not really your actual son, right? Well, he's not my biological son, <laughs> but I, I treat him as my son. How did that situation come about? Because you I just came out of nowhere with it. I just met him. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting because he, he looked at me and he's, he's shaking and he's crying and he's all the things that I wish my actual oldest son was, but we just don't have that relationship mm-hmm. because when you pray for success, you don't pray for jealousy, envy or entitlement. Mm-hmm. And those things come along with it, you know, and his mom's entitlement has been filtered through him. So while being a privileged child, still feels deprived. Are you still open to, to having that relationship, though, at this point? It would be pretty tough to have it now. Like, we haven't communicated with each other for almost five years now. Wow. You know, and he's, he's, he's 20, so his support will be over. Everything will be, you know, out of the way. And then when you see people temperamental, when you see things that you see from people, like, my enemies' enemies are my friends. So when you see people mm. make uh, the common ground or make relationships on a common ground of disliking you, mm-hmm. it, it gets awkward when you see it's your actual child. Like, when me and Floyd are arguing, mm-hmm. and he thinks it's we're going to actually hurt each other, he'll go out and be, reach mm-hmm. out to go to the fight and do everything else, but then Floyd will call and say, I couldn't tell your son that he can't have the tickets. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's, it's a... You know, it's just an awkward space, but mm-hmm. because I love Floyd like a brother, he, he's, my, he's my brother. Yeah. You know? so how are you and Floyd right now? We're cool. Oh, you guys are cool? Yeah, like yeah. we have our arguments, or we fight, and then because <laughs> of the platforms that we're on, like for me, mine's run across CNN. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the stuff that I was saying. Everything you say. So it, it changes. It feels a lot different, mm-hmm. but it's, it's the same argument you just hear in the house when two brothers go after each other. How do you feel like um, social media has affected music? Because you you came out a long time ago, and now so many artists have the platform as, uh, for social media, but sometimes it can be have affected it in a bad way. Um, how do you feel like it's well, affected it? Everyone who records is an actual artist now. See, we, we worked to be anointed or to be acknowledged as an artist by getting a deal with a major record company or somebody who could market and promote it in the stages that I fell in love with hip-hop. But now... Immediately after you've recorded it, you can release it. Your SoundCloud can get played. You could be playing on YouTube clip. Your phone shooting HD footage. There's no reason why there's not something out there right. that's representing you as an artist. And when you get a good one, that's like there's a kid that uh, has a record called Panda. Uh huh. Designer. It's his first song. Right. You know, and I met with him, and he, I was like, "Yo, so let me see, you know, your other stuff." And he was like, "I got another song." I said, one, like one other song? He's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. I just remember who I was at that point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as talented as I'd like to think I I am, I wasn't able to do it again right after I did it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and it's just, I hope that they're able to find the right things in the window 
that they can actually have a long career. But, and then it's just more now. Now that he's more than just being an artist, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean, not like from that time period, I had to be, I was bounced around. This mm-hmm. is why Get Rich or Die Trying was so well put together, is because I, I recorded an album with Jam Master J on Jam J Records, and then I recorded an album on Columbia Power the Dollar mm-hmm. that never was actually released. And then the shot came back, wrote, and created an album that was, I felt like, perfect, like it was mm-hmm. matching everything, and it worked. You know, but without those circumstances, I don't, I don't think I would have created the same record or had the same passion, you know. With the recent passing of Prince, I have to ask you, do you feel like there's anybody left in music that's, like, iconic like that, like, on that level of Prince? I'm, uh, not not that level. Yeah. You know, like, this. Michael Jackson. Prince was, like, behind Michael Jackson for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and after that, I don't know. It was really interesting to find out that he didn't have kids. I know. I mean, he had he lost a child. Yeah, you but know, my time, but he didn't have any kids, like physical kids. Right, like that's to mm-hmm. leave his, his to your legacy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that was that was interesting to me. I said, no, no kids at all. I was like, damn. Does Fifty want more? I'd like to have people <laughs> that I can influence. Uh huh. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily my kids. I don't want adult kids. I, I have full blown grown adult kids that I get, I'm getting rid of them. <laughs> and I take the little guys early on and make sure they don't make the mistakes that I've made. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so great talking to you. This is my first time meeting you. Thank you so much for coming to Naptown. It's definitely my pleasure. Yes, DJ Lom, like Keisha Nicole, 5 o'clock, shut down mix, 50 sitting here until 7 o'clock. That's 600, actually 6002 East 38th Street. That's 38th in Arlington, okay? It's 963, home of the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, 50.